Welcome to today's lesson. In our previous two lessons, we have discussed that India experiences tropical monsoon climate and the factors that determine it. This is the third lesson on climate of India where we shall be talking in details about the major seasons of India with a detailed analysis of summer season. Well, the video links of all the lessons from this chapter are provided in the description for your reference. So let's begin with today's lesson. Here the chart displays the temperature and precipitation pattern of Indian climate. Here we find that these two elements of weather that is temperature and precipitation is not uniform throughout the year. This is to say that for maximum part of the year that is from March to almost September the temperature remains quite high almost above 30 degree Celsius after which there is considerable decrease in temperature for the last part of the year. Also there are seasonal variations in rainfall. In fact, here we find that it rains only for a fixed period of the year or for a few months from May to September. Another fact to be noted is that it usually rains after a period of high temperature and after this period of heavy rainfall, the climate dries up as the rate of precipitation we can see here decreases. So based on the temperature and precipitation pattern of Indian climate, one can infer that India enjoys four distinct seasons, summer, advancing monsoon, retreating monsoon and winter. So these are the four major seasons of India. Summer season begins from March and continues till May. During this time, the temperature is usually very high and the rate of precipitation is low. So, summer is a hot and dry season. Just after the summer season arrives the season of advancing monsoon. During this time, the temperature is high also it is accompanied by substantial rainfall. Thus, advancing monsoon is a warm and wet season. After advancing monsoon comes the season of retreating monsoon. Retreating monsoon prevails only for a shorter duration that is from October to November. During this time, we find that there is drop in temperature as well as rate of precipitation. After retreating monsoon is followed by winter season which exists for 3 months from December to February. During this time the temperature remains quite low also there is less of rainfall. Thus winter is a cool and dry season. So, these are the four major seasons of India. In today's lesson, we shall be focusing on summer season. Well, we generally associate summer season with high temperature. During this time, the sun shines brightly over our head and it seems that the sun sucks out all our energy due to which we feel warm, sweaty, uncomfortable and less energetic. It is the season when we feel like sipping a glass of glucon D, lemonade or mango juice in order to rejuvenate our mind and soul. So now let us discuss in details about the characteristics of Indian summer. As seen in the previous chart, summer season begins from March. We know that the sun is overhead the equator on 21st March that is spring equinox after which the sun gradually starts to move to the north towards Tropic of Cancer until it is directly over its head. 
when the sun is directly overhead the tropic of cancer direct or vertical rays fall on it as a result of which the average temperature of indian subcontinent begins to increase and thus arrive summer season in india so during summer the mean temperature of indian subcontinent remains quite high however the temperature is not uniformly high throughout the country in this map we can see that there are some places in india where temperature exceeds 35 degree celsius whereas there are some other places where temperature remains as low as 15 degree celsius well if we look into this map very carefully then we shall find that the eastern coastal plain of india and the northwestern part of the country records maximum temperature almost above 35 degree celsius also the average temperature of northern plains of india are quite high and it ranges between 30 to 35 degree celsius now if we consider the western coastal plain of india then we shall find that it experiences moderate temperature and it ranges between 20 to 25 degree celsius well this happens because we know that the coastal areas experience sea breeze and land breeze due to which the temperature of these places remain moderate Now if we consider places that are located at high altitudes that is the Himalayan region remains comparatively cooler and the temperature ranges between 15 to 20 degree celsius or sometimes even below it Overall we can conclude that the average temperature of Indian subcontinent remains high during summer however there are some regional variations Now we know that low pressure is associated with high temperature. Now since we just discussed that the average temperature of Indian subcontinent increases during summer so a low pressure condition develops over it. whereas the adjoining water bodies namely arabian sea indian ocean and bay of bengal remains comparatively cooler therefore high pressure condition develops or exists over them now this difference in pressure condition results in wind flow this is to say that we know that wind always flow from high to low pressure region so the low pressure condition of the northern plains attracts winds from surrounding areas that is the prevailing winds of this region proceed towards the low pressure condition of the northern plains now as the winds advance towards the indian subcontinent it changes the atmospheric condition of this region let's see how well you must have heard that thunderstorms and cyclones hit the eastern coast of india especially the states of west bengal and orissa during summer months almost every year this happens because the low pressure conditions of the indian subcontinent attract thunderstorms and cyclones from the existing regions now one such powerful cyclone was amphan that had hit the indian states of west bengal and orissa on 20th may 2020 the super cyclone also affected the neighboring country of bangladesh now during this super cyclone the winds were blowing at a speed of 150 to 200 km per hour the storm affected more than 10 million people and mainly affected trees crops and human property now this is a common scenario for most parts of the india during summer season so i just mentioned that the eastern part of india especially the states of orissa and west bengal experience violent thunderstorms during summer months and these thunderstorms that are prevalent over west bengal and adjoining states are called kalbuishaki these thunderstorms are called kalbuishaki because they are mostly active during the months of april 
to me which corresponds to Boishak month according to Bengali calendar. Now I also mentioned that these thunderstorms are very violent and severe and they cause massive damage to life and property and therefore they are called Kalboishaki which refers to calamity in the month of Boishak. Now these Kalboishaki originate in the Chota Nagpur plateau region and then they flow eastwards. Especially these winds flow in this direction that is from northwest to southeast and therefore they are also known as nor'westers as they blow from northwest direction. These thunderstorms are responsible for pre-monsoon showers in this part of the country. Well, apart from causing huge destruction, these pre-monsoon showers helps in cultivation of crops. It enables rice and jute cultivation in the state of West Bengal and also favors growth of tea crops in the state of Assam. Now before proceeding with our lesson, let us try to answer this question. Kalboshaki is beneficial for cultivation of dash in Assam and the options given are cotton, silk, tea or coffee. Well, which of them do you think is the correct one? Well, we just read that Kalboishaki favors cultivation of tea crops in the state of Assam. So the correct option is tea. Now let's proceed with our lesson. Now apart from the eastern part of India, thunderstorms also hit the southern coast of India, especially the states of Karnataka and Kerala. The thunderstorms or pre-monsoon showers that hit the state of Karnataka are known as mango showers. They are called so because they help in the ripening of mango fruits during this season. Again, the thunderstorms that are active in the state of Kerala during summer months are called cherry blossom. These thunderstorms enable blooming of flowers on coffee shrubs which eventually form coffee pods. So mango shards help in the ripening of mango fruit whereas cherry blossoms help in the ripening of coffee pods and not cherry fruits. So just do not get confused by its name. Cherry blossoms do not help in the ripening of cherry fruit but it helps in the development or ripening of coffee pods and not cherry. So as discussed just now, several parts of India experience pre-monsoon showers or thunderstorms during summer months. Well, apart from thunderstorms, dust storms are also prevalent during summer months. And these dust storms that blow over the northern plains are known as loo. So loo is a hot dry dusty wind that blows locally over the northern plains especially over the states of Rajasthan, then UP or Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Now being a hot dry wind they are responsible for lowering the level of humidity up to an uncomfortable level and it also raises the average temperature of these places to about 45 to 50 degree celsius. So in presence of loo the summer days become more uncomfortable and intolerable. So now let us summarize the characteristics of Indian summer. We read that Indian summer prevails from the month of March to May. During this time Indian subcontinent experiences high temperature whereas the adjoining water bodies have lower temperature. 
now due to high temperature low pressure develops over the northern plains whereas since the adjoining water bodies records comparatively lower temperature so high pressure exists over them now due to this difference in pressure conditions that is low pressure over northern plains and high pressure over the water bodies different wind flows originate now due to this difference in pressure conditions that is low pressure of northern plains and high pressure of the water bodies different winds are originated so different parts of the country experience violent thunderstorms and local wind so these are the important pointers that we shall keep in mind while discussing about indian summer so this brings us to the end of today's lesson in this lesson we discuss about the major seasons of india that is summer advancing monsoon retreating monsoon and winter especially we focused on summer season in our subsequent lessons we shall be discussing about other indian seasons don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now